going on in the big old world today, people? I'm here to bring you the latest and the greatest on the Karis Town Hall meeting. Tonight at 6 p.m. at LP High School Auditorium. I'm going to give you a little information, a little background to Karis Chemical LLC. This is their handler ID. They are a hazardous waste generator, a large quantity generator. These are the names they go under. Uh, these are the states that they're in. Um, these are not all of the Keras Chemical owned companies, but these are the ones that are run underneath Keras Chemical. Uh, we have Santa Clara, we have Los Angeles, and we have our place in LaSalle. This here people are the waste generator codes that Keras generates. Um, and as you can see by these codes, they are um, we have corrosive waste, ignitable waste, reactive waste, arsenic, barium, chromium, lead, mercury, selenium, silver, benzene. Um, people, just a question. Um, what did we have in our soil and our furnace filter samples that we took? We had arsenic, we had barium, we had chromium, we had lead, and some of us had mercury. Some had selenium. We did not have any of these, fortunately. But the fact is, these all came up in the soil samples and furnace filter samples after the fire on 111. Uh, let's not forget these. Um, these are just a lot of solvents and stuff that they use. Um, um, but potassium cyanide, or potassium cyanide. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know what cyanide is, and that is a little bit alarming to me. Reactive waste. Interesting. You read it right. Reactive waste. Now, what does that mean? Is that re radioactive waste? What kind of waste is that? And where does that waste go? How is that waste generated? These are all questions. I would like to know the answers to. Uh, there's a lot we don't know, and there's a lot they're not telling us, people. This is a toxic release inventory. Um, this is transferred in pounds, people. It's called the TRI, and this is uh, the total release of toxins that are in, let loose into our environment in pounds. Um, for 2021, because we don't have 2022, or any of 2023, as you can see, we have barium, copper, lead, manganese, mercury, nitrate compounds, nitric acid, and zinc compounds, people. These all came up in our furnace filter samples and in our soil sample. Uh, the EPA and local government agencies and other state, federal, all want to deny this fact. Um, here we're looking at the TRI, the Toxic Release Inventory History, reported chemical releases in pounds per year, um, and we're going to go through the years. Uh, the total emissions, that means emissions, what they let loose into the air. And this is just air. There's air, there's land, there's water. Um, but as you can see, these, these are in pounds, people. Pounds. A lot of toxic stuff to be let loose in our small little town. Here's your releases to land. These are the releases to land that they are claiming because they're in charge, of course, of self-reporting their emission violations. Total releases on site. As you can see, this number is a lot higher than the other numbers. But these are their emissions on site. This is 2021. Total uh, off-site transfers. I'm guessing that has got to do with um, what they hauled out, their toxic stuff. But this is year by year. Uh, easily found on the internet. Uh, here we go again with some more inventory uh, breakdowns of the years. As you can see, 2021 is in the left column. Heavy metal name is over in the further left. 2020, 2019, 2018, and 2017. These are the pounds that was let loose into the air, people. 
transferred in pounds. Total release. This all needs to be in play. Here's your air. Here's your um, your land. But one thing I wanted to show is toxic release inventory. It says alkalines and chlorine manufacturing. Remember, people, when the fire first started, what we had. Remember the chlorine, the day of the fire, the tanker truck, why the chlorine tanker truck was there and in the videos. Um, no violations, people. We're looking right here at the quarter, uh, first quarter of 2023. No violations. Not one violation or the months after the fire. No alarm, no sprinklers. Didn't the sprinkler system did not work? Over one million pounds went into the air. Where did it go? Where did it go? And not one violation. Sad, sad. These agencies failing us. Right here, this is a pollution violation. Don't let them deceive you tonight with their fancy words and their their lingo. This is a tactic, people. They have violations after violations. I'm showing you one at the moment because I'm not going to spend my day looking them all up again. They do violate. So do not let them deceive you in telling you that they do not violate any emissions because they do. I call them plumes. They're called emissions violations.